In this video, I am going to share my process on how I plan my next destination as a full-time digital nomad. What's up everybody? If you are new to this channel, my name is Salwa. I am full-time digital nomad. I have been traveling for the last three and a half years. I have been to more than 28 countries in three different continents and I've done this all by myself. So a lot of you requested to know, well, how do you exactly plan your next trip? So let's dive in. The first thing I do is I research my next destination based on where I am currently. The reason is I don't really like long flights and I also don't like layover. I prefer direct flights. So I would go on Google map and I look at the map depending on where I'm at and where I would like to visit. Then I start to do some research to see if I would go visit this country. For example, right now I am in Arizona, United States and I'm planning my trip to Mexico. And since I have never been to Mexico and I've always wanted to visit, I thought this was the perfect time. My next step is to start doing some research and the most important thing that I do is to research the visa situation so for example going to Mexico I know that the American passports allow you to stay up to 180 days you don't always get the 180 days but I know this is the maximum you can get on a tourist visa how did I know that I actually went on to the embassy website to figure out okay how long can I stay as a tourist visa in Mexico and that was the answer 180 days I also know that now they are tracking down on digital nomads and they are a lot more careful to give out those 180 days which by the way I'm gonna make a whole video on how to get the 180 days stay in Mexico while I'm doing my research about the visa situation and all the documentation that I need I also do research safety because I want to make sure that wherever I'm gonna go it has to be a safe place for me to go as a solo female traveler and here is the most important thing you need to do before you travel to another country you need to have travel medical insurance in this video I partner with safety wing which I use it is a travel medical insurance that covers nomads and that covers you in case you have an accident if you get sick and they also cover you with anything related to your airlines such as losing your luggage flight delay natural disaster personal liability honestly it is so worth it so I highly recommend you check it out I will leave my link down below so all you gotta do is to go on on safetywing.com and then you fill up your information they will ask you where are you going you type the country of where you're gonna go they will also ask you some personal information you enter your payment information and that's it and I also want to remind you that they also cover you in case you get sick with COVID. So that's very important. Again, I'm going to leave my link down below if you wish to sign up with Safety Wing. I certainly am and that gives me a huge peace of mind when I travel abroad. All right, so step number three is budgeting. So assuming you already are a digital nomad, which means you have an income, you then budget. And what I do to get a good ballpark of how much it's going to cost me for one month I visit this website called Nomad's List and <coughs> cookie in my budget I include transportation, food, lodging and business expenses as well as leisure. For example, a co-working space would be a business expense and some of the coffee, so coffee shop I go to to work I also consider my business expense so I make sure to include that into my budget so I'll have a good idea on how much it's going to cost me for that month. Of course this varies from countries to countries and from cities to cities. If you spend your budget in one month in Guadalajara it will be a lot cheaper than one month in Vegas for example. So it's up to you to do your research. That way it'll give you a good idea of how much money you need to travel there. Alright, so after I did all that, my next thing is to start researching where to stay so by that I mean the neighborhood but also what kind of place I'm going to sleep in so I love house sitting I've done a whole video on how to book house sitting gigs you can find it right here but if you don't find a house sit per se my next step would be to go on a Facebook group and ask the locals or the expat community about a sublease or place I can rent. I prefer to rent from local so I can be part of the uh, local economy. But if I don't find a sublease, then my next move will be to go and stay in a co-living space because I like to be surrounded by people at the beginning when I arrive in a country I don't know so I can make friends and then I can get 
acquainted with the area so I like to plan between one to three months ahead of time I do this because I travel full-time and I just have to make sure that I have a place to stay for the next following three months but for me it gives me a sense of security and I always like to have a backup plan so I have booked my stays and my transportation all the way to the end of October right now we're in August and that gives me a sense of security I've researched extensively the area to make sure it was safe I could find a co-working space or a place where I can work coffee shop etc because I travel alone as a female I want to make sure that wherever I go is an area I can go and travel by myself step number five is to create my itinerary so my itinerary is what airport what flight what hotel and so on for each of the cities I am going to go to so I do this research ahead of time so I'm aware of what to expect when I get there but also I leave a lot of room for the unexpected because I've learned in my three and a half years of traveling full-time that most likely when you plan something a lot of it will happen as planned but it's also important to have a plan because it makes me feel more secure and I'm not the type of woman who can just go boom to a country and not having anything planned for at least the next month or so so very important for me to plan ahead okay we almost done planning so now you have everything planned everything booked you know where you're going how long you're gonna stay you know about your visa situation you have your itinerary so in that phase what I do it's usually a week before I leave I make sure I book an onward flight ticket that is refundable by my airline so maybe 24 hours before I think some of them you can keep up to three days but I usually do this 24 hours before I leave I book a flight ticket that is refundable because I just simply don't know where I'm gonna go next this is also the time where I print all my important documents and I have a copy that I always carry on me another copy that I leave in my luggage at my hotel this is also the time I contact all my emergency contacts and I tell them exactly where I'm gonna be and I share my itinerary with them I also go onto the embassy website and I register my itinerary as well so in case something happens to me my embassy can notify my emergency contact I call my bank I let them know I will be traveling outside of the country for whatever period of time and that's it you've done all the work you've planned your trip now you're ready to go and so my last word for you is to enjoy every moment and leave room for the unexpected and this is how you have the best experience in your life I certainly have in the last three and a half years of my travel and I am not ready to stop yet thank you so much for watching let me know if I missed anything leave a comment down below do not forget to subscribe like and share and I'll see you on my next video bye bye